Hello everybody and welcome back. So Electric just leaked the post on Twitter claiming it to be Tesla's new battery cell produced in-house with its new Roadrunner battery manufacturing system. And it just confirms my theory that Tesla is moving to 40 to 70 cells or even bigger which I mentioned in my last video. Based on everything that we know so far, there is a strong indication that this new battery is currently available in production and Tesla is currently ramping it up in Roadrunner battery manufacturing system. In this video, I will explain why is Tesla making bigger batteries, how will this impact the specs of Tesla's vehicles and why will this new battery will blow your mind. Before we begin, I've noticed that almost 95% of you aren't subscribed. So please take a moment and hit the subscribe button if you haven't already as it really helps out with the channel and you can unsub anytime you want. With that being said, let's dive right in. In an article that Electric wrote today, they say, quote, An anonymous source sent Electric two pictures of a battery cell claiming that they were Tesla's new in-house cell. Adding, quote, And another independent source was able to confirm to Electric that this is indeed one of Tesla's own battery cells produced with the Roadrunner system. Therefore, it perfectly fits my theory that Tesla is moving to 40 to 70 cells or even bigger. However, just know that the more important part about this video will be the specific battery benefits which we will discuss as we continue to determine the specs of larger battery cells based on patents and everything we have known so far. That is a larger cell with tablets design and dry electrode technology. We have already talked about tablets and dry electrode technology in my previous video. So to summarize these videos as how it relates to this bigger cell design, there are a number of mind-blowing advantages from a bigger battery like increased energy density. Energy density just means that how much energy can you store in a battery cell. Obviously, if you increase the size of the cell, you can store more energy in the increased portion. Also there is casing in the battery packs. So for any given level of kilowatt hour, a doubling in diameter would result in one battery for every four batteries and would reduce the casing material by about 50%. In addition, a 15 to 20% reduction in volume. The sum of this is significantly reduced cost and weight of the batteries. Another advantage would be in manufacturing process. The dry electrode manufacturing process Tesla acquired from Maxwell Technology is really really fast. This allows the speed of production to be 16 times faster than the current pace. To put this into perspective, according to Zordin Gisigi from The Limiting Factor, the speed of manufacturing is like bullets coming out from machine guns, but the larger cells will likely be slower to produce, so by taking both of these factors into account, Tesla will achieve mind-blowing increase in production rates and reduce cost. But why didn't Tesla or other companies made bigger batteries from the get-go if bigger batteries are game-changing in electric vehicles? Answer: Heat Heat was the limiting factor. The wider the diameter, the more heat is generated. If you look at this problem from first principle approach, the heat problem can only be solved by solving the internal resistance in the cells. That is, if you can reduce the heat generated, then you can make the cells wider. And one of the main reasons for high internal resistance in today's batteries is liquid binder. This binder is used in batteries to bind anode, cathode, and everything together in the batteries. But since it is made from plastic-like materials and completely covers the electrode as seen in the diagram, and also it increases the internal resistance that is responsible to generate more heat. Maxwell's dry electrode technique gets rid of this binder which is seen in this diagram. And this allows them to increase the battery size and minimize the resistance which overall solves the heat problem. For more details, you can study Maxwell's patents in the description down below. Tablet cell also allows the batteries to cool faster. I have already explained how tablet cell improves the thermal management in 40 to 70 cells in my last video. It would be redundant to explain everything here. But in summary, the tablet electrode design drastically reduces the ohmic resistance by providing much more surface area which decreases the distance that electron has to travel. Also, Elon Musk has already said that it is way more important than it sounds. To sum it up, Tesla can increase the battery size as long as they don't break the threshold when batteries start to overheat. All the estimates made until now are conservative because according to B.R. Cooper from Twitter, Tesla's new battery is 5490 cells, which goes a little over my theory of 40 to 70 cells. You can follow him on Twitter, the link is in the description down below. So if you assume that Tesla uses these cells in the newer models and compare the volume of these newer cells with 2170 cells that are used in Model 3. We can calculate the volume of the newer cells by keeping the diameter 54 and Tesla's 2170 cells by keeping the diameter 21 and by dividing the volume of the newer cells with the volume of 2170 cells, we get a 9 times increase in volume. Tesla currently uses about 4400 cells in Model 3 long range. With bigger battery cells, Tesla can use about 490 to 600 cells to achieve similar range or even more. This means that Tesla needs to produce only 600 cells instead of 4400 cells which saves manufacturing time and cost. 
If Tesla announces this at battery day, then it will blow my mind out of Earth's orbit. Also real quick, I would really appreciate a thumbs up as it really helps with the YouTube algorithm and these videos do take really long time to make. Thank you and let's continue. So far we have addressed why Tesla is making bigger batteries and why will it blow our mind. Now let's see how will this impact the specs of Tesla's vehicles. Increase in range. The energy density is increasing sort of maybe on the order of like five-ish percent per year and it doesn't sound like much but you add that up over a number of years with compound interest it ends up being quite quite a significant number. In my previous video I showed you this calculation. This was achieved by the combination of Maxwell dry electrode technology and tablet design that we have already discussed in this video. Also, cell to pack technology can be used in bigger batteries to achieve even higher range. We, you don't really need modules in my view. We should just go from cells to pack at this point. But the modules in the Model 3 are not actually interchangeable, so there's no point in having modules really. You just have a, we, should, we should just have a pack. So these estimates still hold their values. Cheaper cost. The thing that bugs me the most about where we are right now is that our cars are not affordable enough. Uh, we, we need to we need to fix that. Like I think just we want to be like slightly profitable and maximize growth and make the cars as affordable as possible. That's like what, what we're trying to achieve. If you look at the cost savings from the use of bigger batteries, sales with up tab and dry electrode manufacturing process along with other technological advancements, then it explains why Tesla can sell you a Cybertruck with 500 miles of range for $69,000. And of course, these newer sales will be used in Roadster, Semi, Cybertruck and Plaid Model SNX and in my opinion, cost of standard Model 3 would be around $30,000 when Tesla produces this battery at scale in the next 2-4 to four years. Faster charging times. I think it's going to actually blow people's minds. Uh, it blows my mind and I am uh, you know, I know it. Uh, <laughs> so, I think it's going to be pretty cool. Remember this technologies decrease the resistance in cells? It turns out that if you manage to decrease the internal resistance in batteries along with the heat, you can charge the batteries at even higher rate. Even a 20 to 40% charging times would be realistic with the bigger batteries. Tesla's new battery is a balance between density, cost and cycle life and this news just adds to the excitement before battery day. I think the three main important aspects for an EV buyer should be cost of the vehicle, its range and charging speed. And Tesla's new batteries ticks all of the boxes. We are all excited for the battery day which shows Elon Musk has managed to reignite the long lost appreciation and excitement for new technologies in general public. So let's wait and watch and see what happens at the battery day. If you enjoyed this video till now, please like and subscribe for more content like this. I would love to read your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you're still watching, then you're awesome. Stay safe, have a nice day and I'll see you again in the next one. Peace. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, so would you like to come up? Would you like to come up and... Okay. Come on up. Come on. <laughs> what the hell with barriers? Touch. Jump over the barriers. Jump over.